Welcome to a Saturday morning live garden chat. Uh, I'm going to start doing these probably not every Saturday, but every other Saturday or maybe one Saturday a month. <coughs> Sorry, guys. <coughs> I've been really, really, really sick this week. My entire household is currently sick. Um, so this is the first time I have actually done anything on YouTube all week. And it was to come and talk to y'all. I thought I was going to have to cancel once, but I didn't. I made it. I'm here. Hopefully y'all will join me soon. I know it's kind of early and people have chores out. But I am here. Anyways. Oh, man. It's just going to be one of those days. I just like to do the live garden chat so that we can kind of talk about what's going on in our garden, any garden highs, any garden lows, any things that we will do again, we won't do again, that sort of thing going on. But, like I said, I have been really sick all week. Like, incredibly sick. Have not barely been out of my house, so my garden has fallen to the back burner. This place is an absolute madhouse. On top of that, we haven't had rain. We got a little sprinkling last night, just enough to wet the top of the ground, not enough to do anything, and that was it. That's all we've had in weeks. So, some of my stuff is fried. Some of it is growing really well, uh, but all of it looks very, very wild. And we're just going to get down to it, show you the nitty gritty of what's going on in my garden. There is a fly around my face. I don't know if y'all can see that, but it's driving me crazy. Oh. Uh, so, let's start showing y'all the garden. Okay, get up. Oh. Okay. So, as sad as Declan is going to be, I think our ground cherries done. These things are like horrible looking like right now. They are almost completely dead and he is going to be so upset about that. And my beans, my Chinese red noodle beans, I said I was saving some of these on the vines. Uh, they're all creepy. Something come through Y'all have to tell me if y'all have ever seen this. And ate the bottoms off of my vines. So, they quit growing. I don't know what would go through and just literally cut it at the base. All of them. So, that I've got these, I had these big beautiful vines. And they just died. Because they can't grow without any roots to feed them. So, all of those are like very sad and they have to come out as soon as I'm feeling more up to it. Uh, the ground cherries, like I said, they're, they're dying. They're seriously, seriously dying. Um, my peppers are starting to come on strong though. So we will be making pepper jelly here soon. As soon as I got more strength, I've just been chopping and freezing them as I can. And then I will just make my pepper jelly with frozen peppers. I don't see an issue with doing that. Um, my cucumbers that I planted back here. Oh my goodness, I've got some that are massive since I've been so sick. I haven't been out to check. So I've got this big old one here that I will have to get picked. And it looks like I've got a squash plant here that is starting to do fairly well. It is getting huge and taking over this back corner. So I will take that as a good sign. This year it feels like I am throwing seeds in the ground and praying for success. I have some that are successful. I've had a lot that are not. Uh, but we're getting there. Um, any food we get out of the garden this year, I'm calling a win. This is our first year gardening here. We are almost at our one year mark since buying our property. Hi, Alicia, good morning. 
Um, and so I've had some successes. I planted, I replanted some beans in my potato bed. I don't know if garden voles will eat beans, but they have come up nicely. These are all bush beans. So hopefully I can have my bush beans going on. My runner beans still didn't produce a whole lot yet. I haven't picked any of them. Um, all of my bush beans I had in ground, the tops of them are eaten off. So you get sick and the pests come and they eat your entire garden. But that's okay. I'm going to do a major garden reset. Hopefully this coming up week. And then the next garden chat thing we do, yeah, we'll be able to see all of my garden resets. Um, I am feeling... A little better this morning. It's been rough. Declan, oh, hold on, let me get y'all situated so I can actually see y'all. Declan and Kenneth are feeling a little better as well, so that makes things a little easier on us. Um, I said it in the intro, but for those of y'all who weren't here, I have been very, very sick all week, have not been out of bed. Pretty sure we all caught the nasty virus you know has been going around for the past three years that we have somehow managed to avoid until this time um but now we are all very very sick Declan handled it the best out of all of us so we are very thankful for that but we're feeling a little better on the mend how is everybody out there today um so I was going to talk about Things that worked and didn't work, and this week most things in my garden have not worked out very well. The heat, the no rain, and then me not being out here to care for them. It, it's just a bad combination all around. And sometimes things don't work in your garden. That's okay. Rip it out, start over. It's my favorite thing about a garden. If it don't work, rip it out, start over. It all comes out in the end. Um, is everybody else's garden doing okay this year? I know some people have had hard, hard garden seasons this year. I just happen to be one of them. Uh, I'm very disappointed to wake up this morning to see all of our ground cherries are dead, though. Declan is going to be very, very sad when he comes out. Those are his favorite things about the garden. Uh, I hope you're feeling better, Sarah. It, it's been rough being sick and not being able to get into the garden. It just takes a lot out of you to get out here and get all this done. And sometimes some things just have to give and the garden's it. At least I need to come all the way out of your house to get tomatoes because we know I've not had the tomato year this year. I left in some of my Beta Lux tomatoes they, I mean, they were mixed in with the ground cherries, and they've kind of produced just a few, but that's about all the tomatoes we're getting, and those have died out too, so. <laughs> we just didn't have it this year with tomatoes. Our peppers, I think, are starting to look better, so I'm happy about that, because they haven't been producing for us, but they just haven't been there. The garden, it's a first-time garden, and anytime you do... <coughs> Anytime you do a first time garden anywhere, it's not going to be its best because you're having to get the soil where it needs to be. And it's a work in progress. I've got a three year goal to make this garden amazing. I'm getting there. One year is down. I got two more years till it's amazing. So, if you're sticking around in two years, you'll see an amazing garden. Um. Yeah, I was going to try to show you all things that I was super excited about this week in the garden, but there's not a whole lot going on out here. Okay, so it's your first year garden too, Sarah. Yeah, it's a learning experience, and that's what I take it as. It's a learning experience. Throw some seeds in the ground, learn what works for you. You can't always, can't always win, but you can always learn. Uh, we've learned a lot. We learn a lot about our areas because 
South Carolina is a whole other ball game from anywhere else I've been. Uh, we grew up in Georgia, and it's completely different out here. Hi, Calico. Uh, so the problem with my peppers are I forgot them outside, and they froze in their seedling stage. They rebounded, but they stunted, and they haven't produced very well since. Yeah, you know, I tried, but it was like Declan's birthday and everything like that, and it just kind of froze. <laughs> well, from a fellow RN, you should totally do that. Uh, I love it out here. I'm <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. It's a whole lot less stressful trying to plant a garden than trying to take care of a patient. So, I don't know if you're wanting to give up your REN status or, you know, quit working in a hospital to be able to live this life, but I think it's awesome. And, yep, I'm totally doing it. There is something over here that looks funny. We're going to go see what it is. It's on my pepper plant. It's, I think, a pepper? A pepper that is not a good pepper. Oh. So my pepper rotted on the vine. It's like mushy. Interesting. See how little my bell peppers are? They're like the smallest things. That's what I'm talking about. They totally stunted. Like, and they don't get any bigger than this. They're like the size of a golf ball, guys. I don't know what I'm going to do with golf ball sized bell peppers. Definitely not meant for stuffing. Um, and these are the California, California Wonder bell peppers. They're supposed to be huge and like awesome. And they're not getting any bigger than this before they are rotting on the bun. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, there's this one on the ground, and it's got, like, this spot on the bottom, so I wonder if it is blossom end rot. This one looks good, which I know some tomatoes look good, while others don't at this point. But the sun shining off of this one made it look all weird. I had to come see what it is. The rotten, rotten pepper. But yeah, all my peppers are staying so incredibly small, and... I don't know. I've planted three more beds. I showed y'all that two weeks ago when we did our first live garden chat. And not a single one of those peppers have sprouted. None of my cabbages have sprouted. <laughs> my beans are growing, so that's about all I got going on. Dr. Earth stuff in the pump bottle that you used. Oh, so is it okay to use milk that's, like, past its expiration date, I guess you could call? We, Declan normally drinks two to three glasses of milk a day, but he's been running a fever and hasn't been drinking milk. And so, I have milk in my fridge that is, like, needs to be poured out. But, if I can mix it with water and pour it on my pepper plants to save my pepper plants, I will totally do that. I have never heard of mixing milk with water. As long as, nope, not clumped up. And we just bought a new, I'm very, very funny about store-bought milk being past its date. And so I just ain't, ain't trusting it. Um, but it will go on the garden. I have never heard that. See? Oh, sorry guys. That is why these garden chats are awesome because every time y'all teach me something. So, milk and water, pour it on pepper plants for blossom end rot. Hi, gardeners. I'm glad you could join us this week. We have just learned that milk and water 
can help fix my blossom end rots on my peppers. So, if you did not know that, it can, evidently. I'm going to give it a try, and I will report back and see if it, if it is actually blossom end rot on my peppers and that fixes it or not. Uh, because that's intriguing to me. Especially as homesteaders, a lot of them have, you know, a lot of homesteaders have extra milk that they need stuff to do with. And if you can use it in the garden, that's a whole nother use for milk. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I want to know if it will work on tomatoes too. My tomatoes had blossom and rot too this year. Uh, obviously, I'm lacking in my soil, um, which I knew that for my tomatoes, but I've never had my peppers get blossom and rot before. So, I didn't quite know that it happened that way. Hey, Simojo! Good morning! Sorry about the voice. I have been really sick this week. So, I am here and I am making it and I am drinking coffee to keep me going, but... Uh, I sound a little squeaky sometimes, so for that, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, so, if I pour the milk water mixture around my plants for the blossom end rot, will it make my plants start smelling like rotten milk? That's what I want to know. Um, I want to... <laughs> I, I mean, I don't really want to smell rotten milk when I'm out in the garden, but... I'm more concerned with the cats coming out to the garden because of the rotten milk smell. You can use old drywall and powder and add it to your compost soil. It's a free and cheap gypsum alternative. Interesting. Hmm. And it has no smell. Okay. I'm glad to know that it has no smell. Because definitely the cats have not figured out that my garden is over here yet. And I kind of want to keep it that way. So not attracting them with milk would be a great idea. <coughs> oh, y'all. Sickness is rough stuff. I'm just glad to be on the mend. And I'm glad that I didn't have to cancel on y'all today. Because uh, that would have been awful. This is what we get for going to the beach last week. Instead of staying here and doing our live garden chat, we come home sick. <laughs> so... Thought she was crazy, but I researched it. it was... Well, y'all are full of knowledge this morning. Man. Okay, so what other household items can fix garden diseases that I need to know about? I'm trying to think of what other issues I've had out here. Other than whatever it is that's eating the, my, my beans. Like, I thought it was probably a rabbit eating my bean tops over here, my bush beans, but my uh, Chinese red noodle beans that's on my trellis, something like just come through and ate just along the bottoms and detached the stems. I guess maybe like a vine border or something, I don't know, and just broke them off. I have no idea what did that. I can't figure it out, but all of those are gone and need to be pulled down. And the worst part about growing beans or cucumbers or anything on a trellis, if you've never done it, is having to pull them down because they're so interweaved that it's like a fight. And I don't want to fight it. <laughs> oh. Baking soda and Epsom salt. Now I have Epsom salt and I know that you can use it in the garden as like a fertilizer, but what does baking soda do in the garden, Alicia? What can I do with baking soda in the garden? Because I always have baking soda on hand. Um, oh. Wow. That's not cool. Mealy bugs. I need to learn. I need to look up mealy bugs and see if we have those. Because it is not fun when you have all of these beans drying on the ground and something comes through and eats the bottom of your vines off and they all mold. So I put off pulling vines off my trellis until midwinter. <laughs> I thought about putting off pulling my vines off, but we have such a long growing season. 
our first estimated frost date is not until November 1st. And it's, you know, not even August 1st yet. So I want to plant something on the trellis that will grow in that time period. I don't know what will grow fast enough on a trellis that I can get produce from before November 1st. But I'm going to try something. Because if not, it's just a waste of space. So, I'm going to fight with it and pull it off. Uh, none of our blackberries are producing this year. Even the wild blackberries, we have seen like five, maybe, ripe wild blackberries. And our property has wild blackberry brambles everywhere. Like, this over here is nothing but wild blackberry brambles all along this fence line. And you... We haven't seen hardly anything produce off of that. I mean, it's just been crazy. You pulled ours off in the spring when we planted for this year. Oh, say mojo. I may have to do that next year. Just let them sit there all winter. Um, baking soda is good for squash to help with powdery mildew. You mix it with water to make a spray. Huh. I know you can use hydrogen peroxide too in a spray. Is that for powdery mildew also? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Garden Earth. We have had a uh, feast or famine with rain out here. And so it was for a while, for like two weeks, we had rain every single day, but just a little bit every single day. And then we went and had no rain. But none of the rain <laughs> was like deep, wetting rain like we need. We really need a hard storm to come through. And it just ain't happening. But South Carolina, our water table is so high that our trees and bushes do really well regardless. Uh, I think our water table is like, I don't know, three feet. I can hit water. And it's the plants that are above ground that aren't doing very good. But my trees and my bushes do great. The blackberries just are having a very weird year this year. I've heard that all around South Carolina. Nobody's having a good, a good year with blackberries. Um, I don't. I just don't know what's going on there. There is like a really mean looking wasp on the side of my thing. So if I get up and run away, y'all, it's because I'm scared of bees and there's a wasp out here. Um. I will be praying for rain for you too, Garden Um, Because we all need rain right now. I, it's just been a weird, weird year. We're getting through it. We've gotten food from the garden, so I call that successful. I'm not hard to please. Okay, Alicia, you need, you're not that far from me, so you need to kind of send some of that rain over our way. Uh, <laughs> we, could, we could use it. And I don't know what's going on out here but we are in a dry zone oh cheryl thank you uh <coughs> sorry we appreciate your prayers we're all recovering from sickness and so we're getting better but we're doing okay oh it is it's been a, a crazy week I mean, we all need to get together and do like a rain dance or prayer or something. Like, this is crazy. Everybody needs rain. Where's our rain at? Um, the only person on here who's getting a whole lot of rain is Alicia. Alicia, share the love. Uh, we could use it. Uh, my corn back here, though, is not did not do good. Anybody have a good corn year? Some of my ears are like this big. Like they're not, they didn't pollinate very well at all. <laughs> and I have like, I don't know, a 20 foot, four foot by 20 foot section of corn that I don't know what I'm gonna do with because it didn't pollinate. So, um, you know, I let Declan run through it. It became a play area. I don't know what else I'm gonna do with it. I guess just cut it down, feed the stalks to the rabbits, the leaves to the rabbits. They can't eat the actual corn, but they can eat the outsides of the corn, like the husk and stuff. Uh, so, at least it won't go to complete waste. Uh, 
I guess chickens can eat the corn cob part where the corns didn't fully form, I guess. I don't know. Well, like cush to me, but then again, everything green looks like fire. <laughs> it is definitely corn back there. <laughs> it's got okra in the way. There's okra back there also, so I'm assuming the mixture of the two is what's throwing you off. <laughs> it is actually corn. My okra back there, however, is doing massive. Um... Because I've been sick all week and haven't picked, my okra is like this long. So, and I don't know. Oh, goats can eat the corn stalks. That's always great. Uh, yeah, my okra. There's nothing you can do with big okra except for save it for seed, I guess. So, or feed it to the chickens. So, the chickens get a whole lot of okra right now. Uh, I just need to go through and cut off all the big ones because we're obviously not eating something that's a foot long. Uh, but I've been too sick to pick it all week. So... I have to go through sometime today, hopefully, and do a garden clean out and clean out all of the overgrown produce, like the big cucumbers and okra and stuff, and get rid of them. Rabbits love okra pods. Now, I have fed them okra leaves, but I've never tried to give them okra pods. Um, interesting. I know okra is completely safe for them. Every part of the okra plant is completely safe for rabbits. So I will try to give them okra. My rabbits are very picky because they have lived on an all forage diet. They think they are spoiled rotten, which I guess they might be compared to other rabbits. Uh, and I have had to feed them just hay when I'm sick. People ask, what do we do for rabbit forage when we're sick? And I would keep hay on hand. I rely on hay for that. And my breeder buck Jackson wouldn't eat one night because all he had was hay. And so I had to sick pick him fresh greens because he didn't want to eat his hay. I, I left the hay in there the next day I come out and he didn't eat any of it. So I went ahead and gave him fresh greens instead of hay. But they're a little spoiled. So I don't know if they will eat the okra, but I will definitely try and see because okra is really good for the digestive system. So we'll see if he'll eat it. They're just a little picky. Um, you know, when you get a fresh forage buffet every day of your life, why not be picky? Oh, sorry. Trying to get my chat to pull up, guys. It's not wanting to work. I've really got to um, figure out more technology because I'm not a very technological person. I'm, I'm not very good with technology at all, but I have enough to give my... Good morning! Good morning, Blenda and Chuck. I hope y'all are doing very, very good. As you can see, I have finally gotten my internet to somewhat work with lives as long as I'm sitting outside. So maybe we can set up that live that we had talked about. Uh, that would be great to do a live with y'all, Blenda and Chuck. Um, I just have to do it outside. My internet doesn't work good enough inside to do a live. So, <laughs> um, but good morning to y'all. Uh, whew, sorry. Absolutely. I will send y'all a message and we will get together. It'll be fun to have a conversation with y'all. Uh, so what does anybody else have to talk about? What's going on in your garden this week? Anybody have anything they want to share? Or we'll get off of here. We've almost been on here 30 minutes. Or I have. Um, but if y'all have anything else y'all want to talk about, I am here to talk to y'all today. As long as this wasp don't come get me. Nothing. Mm -hmm. No? Everybody had a garden stuff to talk about this morning? Well, I was glad for everything y'all have taught me this morning. It's been a fun, fun garden time. And anybody who's joining the live late should really go back and read through the comments because they've taught me all kinds of stuff. 
Your first baby rabbits are getting big. Oh, that's so awesome. I love baby rabbits. They are so, so much fun. And I'm glad yours are getting big and that they're growing because a lot of first time rabbits are very hard to keep the litters alive. I don't know, it's like rabbit moms need a trial run or something. Most of the time they can't keep their first litters alive. But, I don't know. Second time, they usually do pretty good. So I'm glad you're sure doing good. We are about to start gearing up for rabbit breeding season around here. And I'm excited about that. We just gotta get to feeling better first. So, as soon as we are over all of this mess, then hopefully we can get on with that. Um, Thank you, Calico. Hopefully, next time we do a garden chat, I won't be so sick and we will be feeling much better then. You've been canning up a storm, Alicia. Oh, I have not canned in a while. I have just been freezing stuff because I haven't had enough really to can. So, I've kind of just been freezing what I could. Canned up some carrots and tomato sauce. How do you have carrots growing? <coughs> Did you buy carrots or did you have them in your freezer and you canned them up, Lyndon Chuck? I know y'all are like more northern than us, but can you grow carrots in the summer where you're at? Alicia canned tomatoes, potatoes. You gotta go corn and okra. I've already done. So how are you canning your okra? Because I've never canned okra before. Like, is it pickled okra or is it just okra? And what do you do with canned okra? We eat it fresh. We fry it. Uh, I put it in soup, so I guess I could do that with canned okra. Put it in soups. Um, but I've never canned okra. Alicia, you are always teaching me something new. I need your ways on canning okra. Uh, because my okra plants are about the only things that produce really well in my garden at this time. So I asked if I could can some of that. Uh, we, however, cannot can carrots, obviously. We can't grow carrots at this time of year. I will be planting carrots with my fall crop here soon. Um, and hopefully I will be canning them in a little bit. Y'all, the sun is all kind of funky. Let me move y'all over. There we go. And y'all can see a different part of my garden. My beans back here, they look beautiful all the way up at the top. And down here at the bottom, like there's no foliage. I have no idea what's going on with them. Uh, they haven't really produced this year, so I've kind of just let them do their thing and hang out back there and get what I can off of them and it's not been enough to worry about. So I have not messed with these two beds back here. They just kind of look pretty and green and that's all they're doing for me. <sighs> all right, guys. So, Blendin Chuck, Alicia doesn't have a YouTube channel yet. Um, it's a work in progress. I'm, I'm working on her. I'm working on her. She is one of my fellow off-grid friends here in South Carolina. And she's amazing. She teaches so much. She knows so much. So, if she would start a YouTube channel, she could teach everybody so much. Uh, she lives an incredible life. And I love it. So she just needs to share it with everybody else. Um, hint, hint, Alicia. We need a YouTube channel for you. So you're canning okra to where you can use it in soups or saute it in a pan. Okay, I could totally get behind that. You bought carrots. Okay, I got gotcha. you. So, yeah, I if I could find carrots bulk somewhere on sale, I totally would be buying them up and canning them. <laughs> Woo! Alicia is going to try and start a channel. So, y'all, if y'all want to learn from another off-grid person, she has been doing this longer than I have, and she's got more knowledge than I have. Um, as soon as she starts her channel, I will I will be letting people know because she totally needs one. Um, she knows so much. It's, it's amazing. Garden. I saw old Alabama gardener canning okra in vinegar. Hmm. I wonder if it would come out like pickled okra. 
if you're kidding okra in vinegar. Um, might. I like pickled okra. I haven't had it in a while. Maybe I should make some, but I like pickled okra. Uh, Declan only eats okra fresh. He will not eat it cooked. He will not eat it any other way. He wants it literally straight off the plant. And he just sets their munches on it. I can't eat it that way. I think it's weird. It's fuzzy. <laughs> I can't do it. But Declan will only eat it straight off of the okra plants. Um, he's just a weird child. He's that way with most vegetables. So, uh, uh, yeah, she's a good one to learn from. So, as soon as she starts one up, I will definitely let y'all know. Um, she's got a lot of knowledge. Okra is super simple. I'll show the rest of them, I guess, so she can post it for y'all. Alright, so as soon as Alicia gets me the can of the okra recipe, I will totally get that out to y'all. Um, I will look for it in a community post. That's probably the easiest to get an actual recipe out without making a video. And that way we can share it. And everybody can enjoy all of Alicia's knowledge. Because she's awesome. Um, anybody else can get anything fun that they want to share that we need to get around to? Anybody? No. Okay. Alright guys, well this is a much shorter live than I had originally attended, but um, I'm starting to feel not so great again. So I am going to go ahead and start closing this out and um, I will talk to y'all again. Probably not next week. We'll probably do it the week after. We'll shoot for an every other week garden live and maybe my garden will look much better then and I will feel much better and feel up to talking for longer but I am glad that I did not have to cancel on y'all this week and that I was able to make it out here for y'all so I I will get there I will get better the fatigue and stuff that accompanies this virus is too much <laughs> um, but we're getting better we're learning to take it easy, get our chores done when we can, and rest when we can. And that's all we can do right now. We appreciate all of y'all's prayers and well wishes. And hopefully we will be getting better soon. I'm glad y'all hung out with me this morning. So until next time, friends. Bye. We will see y'all later.